Hey, Jenny Kavnar, welcome to Sports Spectrum. How are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing great. I love your story. I love your journey. Really excited for people to hear about all that you've accomplished and the success that you've had. But let's just start with, I think it's fascinating to me because you're a mom of two, you're a wife, and you have this really cool job that is... Uh, all encompassing and it's a long season. So describe a typical game day for you uh, during the season. It's got to be crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. I mean, 162 games in a, in a regular season for baseball is nuts in and of itself. And that's a circus. And then add on the circus of family life and two kids. And, um, you know, my husband is a Denver firefighter. So we have his schedule to juggle with too. Um, it's definitely all hands on deck here. And we're so grateful for the extra help we have. My parents live in town, my sister-in-law, um, you know, we, we have a great nanny right now. And so we're just really, really lucky um, with the, you know, surrounding support. Um, but for me, typically I wake up with the kids. They don't care if the game went late, extra innings, whatever it was the night before. They're up between six and seven every day. And so we get up and uh, try and have some family time in the morning before I really get going. I have a national radio show on Sirius XM that starts at noon. So I have a lot of prep work for that. And then also just catching up, um, you know, on, on little storylines I might have missed the night before. And so a lot of reading goes into my prep work, I would say, throughout the course of the day. Uh, after my radio show, I'm off to the ballpark and uh, for a home game of 640 start uh, mountain time, we usually are there around three o'clock, get in the clubhouse, uh, check in with players, might have a specific interview lined up that we do that day, might just be, you know, grabbing information for our pregame show. Um, on the average night, I'm typically hosting our pre and post game show, although I do back up play by play as well. So if I'm doing that that night, it's a lot more prep work in my day. Yeah. Um, and then our show is on 30 minutes before the game. So we're out on set, lights, camera, action, let's go play ball, do the pregame show, uh, game starts. And that's kind of my first downtime of the day. I would say the first inning, catch my breath, eat, hopefully, maybe for the first time that day, and uh, then dive into the game and get ready for the post game show, post game show wraps, and I'm back home to do it all over the next day. Oh, and then we travel <laughs> sometimes too. <laughs> right. And so there's a lot there. And certainly being a mom and being a wife as well. Um, the, the question I have, I just keep thinking is how do you juggle it all? Because I'm sure that's the question you're asked the most. And then you take on a radio show, by the way, too, which is yeah. great. I love Sirius XM. And I love hearing that you have a show there, but that's a lot to carry. How do you juggle it? How do you answer that question when people, people tell you or ask you that? I, will, I just think I've learned um, as many amazing women and examples as I have in my life that are working moms and excel in their career. I think I've learned from them and now I've learned in my own life, you really can't do it all, right? You can't do it all by yourself. And that's where the help comes in. That's where the village comes in. And uh, again, so grateful that my kids get to grow up with so many people that love them and that have poured into their lives. And I have to just come, you know, to the realization that when I'm with them, I have to try and really be with them. And that's easier said than done. But I've always tried to live by the motto, be where your feet are. And when my feet are at home, they need to be here. And when they're at work, I need to be there and know that, you know, my kids and trust they're, they're being taken care of, whether, you know, it's with my husband, who's an amazing partner, or uh, again, my parents or other family members chipping in and helping out. So um, I would say some days you feel like you hit a home run and you're like patting yourself on the back and really proud of all you've become accomplished and some days you just feel like everything's falling apart and that's just the reality of it I mean uh when you have a lot of balls in the air sometimes one's gonna fall and it'll cause all of them to and sometimes you know you look like you're a really good magician <laughs> well you said be where your feet are which I loved um your feet have been in Colorado for a long time that's where you grew up so it has to be really neat to be a broadcaster in the place that you have I guess, I mean, it's kind of like me, I'm a New York Mets fan, right? And I can imagine being a broadcaster for the Mets with the team I grew up with since I was, you know, seven years old. I have mm -hmm. to imagine that's such a neat experience that you're probably pinching yourself with every day, I would think, growing up a Rockies fan, and here you are as a broadcaster for the team that you loved as a kid. Yeah, I think it goes back even further. I think growing up, I didn't really see myself being like a woman on TV and sports represented in baseball world. Um, a lot of it was when I decided I wanted to be a sports broadcaster, it was very specific to like, I want to be a college football sideline reporter because that's where I saw a lot of women in the arena. 
Um, my dad was a longtime high school baseball coach here in Colorado. He's in the high school hall of fame. And I grew up on a baseball field. It's very innate to me to know the game. Um, I've been around it my whole life. And so when the very first opportunity came up, I was already working in sports broadcasting and um, I had an agent at the time that called and said, there's this opening in San Diego for a job with the Padres. Like, do I think you'd be great for it? Do you want to go down? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Again, not realizing like what the job would entail because I hadn't really seen, um, a woman on a baseball broadcast. And so I went down and this meeting um, with the general manager of the TV station in San Diego, I'll never forget. He's like, so what do you know about baseball? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? What do I know? <laughs> like started telling him my whole life story. And he's like, well, do you know how to keep score? And in my mind, I'm like, who doesn't know how to keep score, right? Like, again, things I just thought were, you know, everyone knew as a kid growing up. So um, I'll, I'll never forget my very first broadcast was the Padres and the Dodgers in San Diego. And I'm sitting on the field. I was the pregame reporter. And I just like the lights are on, all the fans are there. And I looked around and it was really that first feeling of like, I was made to do this. And that was in 2007. I was lucky enough to be with the Padres for five years and grow in, in my craft and grow in that organization, which was so good to me. And that time in my life being in San Diego was so good to me. Ended up meeting my husband there through one of the Padres players. And um, we moved to Colorado when the job opened up here. And yeah, you're right. It was a dream come true. I really never thought about, you know, working in my hometown, but I was so blessed and so glad I had that experience beforehand. Like I got to learn about myself without being planted in the space with my family and friends, you know, watching me all the time. And so when I did come home, I was ready for that. I was ready for people who wanted to talk about the game every day and who wanted tickets to the game every day. And, you know, all the, all the kind of side distractions that can happen with being in your hometown, but um, really super lucky. And I think too, the, the Rockies didn't come to Colorado until 1993. So I was already 11 years old um, when they got here. And uh, I feel like that was a prime time to like really be a sports fan. So I feel like I lived the beginning of the Rockies and lived a lot of the history of the Rockies. Um, so that really helps, I think, in broadcasting every day because you you experienced all of those emotions with the fans um, who have been lifelong fans of the team. So you glanced over the story, but I'm going to bring it back <laughs> a minute. Of meeting yeah. your husband in San yeah. Diego because of a baseball player. You said your husband's a firefighter. I need to hear this story. Yeah, yeah, it's a good story. Um, he So my husband played minor league baseball. He's from Northern California. And he played in the White Sox organization and uh, had some injuries and always decided in his mind that when he was done playing, he was going to be a surf bum in San Diego, which I think is a great decision in life. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? So uh, he was done playing, moved down to San Diego. And um, within a few months, he had um, worked out at spring trainings with Will Venable, who was a Padre at the time. And um, they just decided to go see their buddy play baseball, sat with his wife. And she called me after the game and I'd become, you know, friends with, with her and uh, with Will obviously covering him. And um, she just said, I'm, I met one of Will's friends. I don't know why I'm doing this. I never met him before tonight, but I think I should introduce you guys. Would you be cool with that? <laughs> I don't know, Catherine, that sounds strange, but sure, that's great. So she goes, well, we'll just do it on a neutral site. Like it was about to be Easter. And she said, let's, you and I go to Easter church service and I'll tell them to meet us there. And um, yeah, it'll be great. So I walked in and right away, I was like, oh, okay, this is exciting. So we say we met at church <laughs> through our friend and um, we, we took in the Easter service. We were chatting a little bit during it. We got shushed, I think, by an older lady in front of us, which is uh, <laughs> very appropriate. Yes. And then uh, we went to the baseball game later that day. And that was kind of, uh, I guess, our first date. And um, within maybe six months of dating, eight months of dating, I got the job back in Colorado. So it was a big uh, life decision for both of us. And I said, I know you wanted to <clears throat> be a surf bum, but we, we have surfing in Colorado. It's just a little colder and you have to wear a lot of gear and it's called snowboarding. So he That's took it up and moved to Colorado and, uh, yeah, this is where we've, uh, planted our roots. That's awesome. That's a great story. Jenny Kavner is our guest here on sports spectrum. Is it hard to put aside biases as a broadcaster? Uh, and I've been broadcasting and, and working in this business for a long time too. And I know when my team is playing internally, I can root for them, but externally you have to kind of 
especially if you're working for a network like an MLB yeah. network type of show, you mm -hmm. have to kind of play it even down the road here, but it's also the team you grew up with. So I wonder, is there moments where you're like, all right, like I'm thinking even in 2007 when the Rockies had yeah. that amazing run yeah. and you're broadcasting with the Padres <laughs> and yet they're having maybe the, the, the season of a lifetime or the month of a lifetime and they have that great moment. Uh, is it hard to put biases aside? I think that was the biggest lesson right there was 07. You know, I'll never forget standing in the studio in San Diego and watching everything unfold. And it's my very first year as an MLB broadcaster. So I'm thinking like, wow, to like cover a team in the playoffs, this would be really cool. And then I'm, I, I remember saying these exact words, like, oh, you'll have plenty of chances to do that. Like internally rooting for the Rockies because um, it was just so, like, it's you said such a historic run in September for them winning all the games they did I think it ended up being 21 out of 22 games they won into October and um the way that game unfolded being a game 163 and Matt Holiday maybe or maybe not touching home play but there's no review at the time so there and all of a sudden the Rockies all the way to the World Series well rewind to when I said I'd be able to cover a team in the playoffs soon again um it took a good 10 years before I ever covered a team in the playoffs in my career. And that happened to be with the Rockies in um, 2017 when they went to a wild card game. And then uh, I followed them and was with them in the playoffs in 2018. So uh, that didn't come as a dime a dozen as I thought it would, but uh, that was kind of that first lesson of like, wow, this, this is hard. Sometimes I uh, also call college basketball and I went to Colorado state and they had such a historic year this year, the fantastic year. And they went to NCAA tournament, but I called a game San Diego State, Colorado State. And I also covered the San Diego State Aztecs. So I know a lot of their coaching staff. So that game was really fun because I think I just had, you know, so much, so many ties to both programs. Um, and you just find yourself, I think, turning something in your brain. Like it's okay to be a fan when you're not broadcasting, but when you are, you really kind of are able to find the balance down the middle. And I think at the end of the day, you root for people in this business. I mean, that's something that I'll always stay true to myself on that. I've met a lot of amazing athletes and a lot of amazing coaches. And, um, you know, even when they go to other teams, you just tend to root for those people to have success um, in their own careers. So I think that drives you more than kind of a, a mascot or a name of a team at the end of the day. For sure. I do want to ask you about being, uh, you know, just being a woman and doing play by play in this in this business is such a cool thing. How great is it that we're seeing more and more women uh, doing play by play and being a part of baseball broadcasts? It's awesome. I mean, I think it goes back to what I was telling you about representation, right? Um, I, I never imagined even working in baseball. Nevertheless, uh, getting to the level that I've been able to get to. And I'm so grateful for people that poured into me and saw those opportunities for me because I didn't see them for myself. I mean, I remember being asked earlier in my career, like, would I ever do play by play? And I was like, oh, no, because I'd heard stories of, of so many people I respected, so many men in the game who talked about from the time they were a little kid taking a tape recorder to a stadium and calling the game into the tape recorder and listening it back and, you know, 15, 20 years of a dream going to the minor leagues, calling 500 games before ever getting their shot. So to me, I respected that path so much. I think I had to realize as I got older that not everyone takes the same path and it's okay to take a totally different one. And my game experience might not have been calling games or having that passion to do it on my own, but it was watching thousands and thousands and thousands of games my entire life, right? High school games of my dad's, uh, growing up going to baseball games, but also I had worked in this business um, for over a dozen years by the time I was asked to, to call a play, to do play by play. So, you know, you think about 12 times probably not 162, but maybe 145 that I was really engaged in throughout the games. season. It's a lot of games. And, um, you know, I know I bring something different to the table. I know my voice sounds different in and of itself, but my background and my experience being a woman, like trying to pull the positives of that. I think I have a, a nurturing side when I'm in the clubhouse of being able to draw out a story from a player um, that again, a, a man can do the same thing, but that's just part of my personality. And so trying to learn in the process of like doing something that I, I, I didn't necessarily have the traditional uh, training and set to do, but finding myself in it and realizing, you know, I, I really had to practice what I preach. I tell a lot of college students who say they want to be a broadcaster, um, you know, what's the best piece of advice, all those things. And at the end of the day, it's be yourself, right? You can learn from other people and you can pull from, from how they do the craft, 
But at the end of the day, you're the only unique you. God's created all of us differently. And so if I'm not bringing that to the table, then I'm not doing the job justice and doing the people who pushed me in this direction justice because they saw something in me. So again, grateful for those things and the opportunity and just trying to get better at it. Um, I I think it comes being a woman doing play-by-play in our business, the extra pressure of, um, you know, I want to open doors for other people below. It's, it's almost the responsibility now to open doors for, for the next generation of women, but also I have to do it. I have to do it right. And I got to be really good at it. And that's hard. That's a lot of pressure sometimes that you put on yourself. And I think that's the balance of going back to, I have to just be me in the process of doing it. You know, at the end of the day, I think we're an entertainment business and some people are going to like you and some people aren't going to like you and either way, that's okay. But I have to stay true to myself. Yeah, and it's it's a subjective business for sure, but it's also now an opportunity in 2022 for that 12-year-old little girl or whatever, even my daughter, 17, to be able to see you and say, you know what, if if I have a passion for baseball, maybe media or broadcasting, I can I can do that now. I can chase after that where maybe you like you said, it's not that you couldn't chase after that. You just didn't see a lot of women, if any, doing play-by-play. So it doesn't even give them an, you an opportunity to dream. Now, some of these girls have that opportunity. And that's got to be a neat thing for you to see and as far as the platform that you have. Yeah, I think that's it, right? The platform that you have. And um, the days that I'm like, oh, this is a lot of work. I don't know. Is this the direction I want to go? Again, that responsibility tugs at you. And I look back to um, the very first year uh, that I got the chance to call a game was 2018. Well, since that time, not just in broadcasting and baseball, but women in baseball in general, the kind of jobs that have grown are just amazing. It's unreal uh, to see the doors that have opened. Um, there's going to be 12 women in uniform this year as coaches, uh, the minor league and major league level. And I think that's that's impressive in and of itself. And um, you now have a female general manager in the game and you have a couple assistant general managers, you have d- director of scouting and just again it's you know we've talked so much um because i'm involved in that circle of being a first or you know being one of the only women um we tend to highlight those other women and we all say can't wait for the day that we're not highlighting because it's just normal and it's just a part of the landscape but at the same time it's important it's important to recognize those people um that are taking that leap of faith and hopefully opening that door for a lot of people behind them Absolutely. Jenny Kavnar is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. We're the intersection of sports and faith. So let's intersect the conversation a little bit with your faith. You met your husband at church. God (laughs) has given you an incredible platform, an incredible blessing in the life that you're living. Tell me about your faith and its importance in your life. Yeah, it's really important. I grew up um, definitely in a Christian household. My dad, I mentioned, was a longtime high school baseball coach. He was also very involved in Fellowship of Christian Athletes. So we used to host FCA for our high school at our house and um, just got the opportunity to kind of grow up in that environment. But I think like any faith journey, you have to take it on for yourself, right? I was exposed to it a lot, but I think it was in college probably that I really took that extra level of, you know, just trusting, trusting the path, trusting the journey. And it's something in my career I've had to do and in my life and all of those things. So um, I think faith is is the foundation of my life. It's the foundation of our family. And um, so grateful that we have that, right? Days that you doubt a lot, you you just trust. You also trust that there's a there's a path and there's an end point that God already has ordained and planned for you. And um, easier said than done, <laughs> but uh, work on that daily for sure. Well, that's the thing too, right? Like you want to, I mean, we mentioned earlier, your, your very busy time and season of life right now with everything going on and yet your faith is important. So time with the Lord has to be important too. How do you kind of manage that? And I'm not saying it's easy for all of us. It's a struggle. It's a daily sort of dying to self at times. How do you find time in moments of a busy season to just pause and to find time with the Lord? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I find myself, you know, often my prayers are in the busiest moments, right? Like driving in traffic or running around like crazy. And maybe I should, maybe it should be more of a pause and a stillness because I think that's what we're asked to do a lot. Um, But I've also been in this season of just trying to have a lot of gratitude, right? Like an important moment at work or, you know, after a really cool conversation with somebody where you feel that spark and you feel that joy of just taking a second to just be really grateful. 
it's it's not always easy to do and even even in hard moments right to find gratitude in in the trials and the tribulations um that's kind of the the season i felt that i've been in lately and um just trying to incorporate it throughout the course of the day she is jenny kavnar congratulations by the way 2021 colorado sportscaster of the year that must have been such an unbelievable moment for you to be able to receive that award Oh, it was really humbling. I think um, out of all the awards, it's an award by your peers. And so I was really surprised by it. Um, I also was pregnant last year. I had a baby. I was on maternity leave. I, I don't think any of those things were on my radar. I missed a, a couple months of the season. So again, I think that um, made it extra special because people saw my work and my work as a mom, right? Like that combination. Um, sometimes I feel, especially in our industry, uh, I know I felt this way when I was pregnant with my son, our oldest, Vincent. I, I just was nervous that moments were going to pass me by when I took time off. And yet when I came back from that was the opportunity I got to call my first major league baseball game when I had a six month old at home. So I think, again, those are just those little moments where God is showing you blessings for making choices and trying to give your all to them. You don't always do the best at it, but um, just trying really hard to be in the moment in the season of life. And uh, those two big moments of, of having children also happen to be two big career moments for me as well. Yeah, not many people miss two months of a season and still win the MVP, right? I don't know about that. I mean, yeah, that's crazy. I don't know. I I, I feel really blessed. It, it was a really big honor. And, um, you know, it goes back to that. Then I had a couple of other female broadcasters calling me and like, you're the first woman to ever win this. And so again, growing up in Colorado and knowing the list of names, names that I admired, uh, sports anchors that I watched growing up, play-by-play -play people I watched growing up, uh, to just be in the list of them. It's just a pinch me moment. Unreal. So cool. Well, Jenny, congratulations on all your success. Thanks for joining us. And our offices are in Highlands Ranch, as I said, in Denver. And so uh, maybe we get the team out to uh, Coors Field this year for a game and get to say hello in person. So yeah, that would be great. Uh, that would be awesome. Thanks very much for joining us. All the best to you. Yeah, thanks for having me.